In this video, I will show you how to solve systems of conic sections, and we will be using substitution and or elimination to do it. When I see a long string of terms like this, um, it's all about the elimination method if possible. For the elimination method to work, we need a couple of these terms to cancel, cancel out. Um, so we can do that if we uh, multiply one of the equations by negative one it will create opposites that cancel so imagine that we multiply for example this bottom equation by negative one okay if I do that my new equation will be negative 2x squared minus 8y squared minus 24x minus 9y minus 40 is equal to 0. So I've multiplied by negative 1. So forget about this equation. Now I have this blue equation. So let's go ahead and combine like terms and, uh, and watch how uh, a couple terms cancel out. So for example we have 2x squared and negative 2x squared. They are going to cancel out. So they're gone. Uh, these don't cancel out. I have negative 4y squared and negative 8y squared. So that's going to be negative 12y squared. These terms cancel out. Positive 24x, negative 24x, they're gone. Uh, but then I have negative 15y and negative 9y. So that's going to be negative 24y. Uh, then these terms cancel out. I have a positive 40, negative 40, they cancel out. And then of course on the right hand side we just have equals 0. So I have this new equation. Um, this equation only has y's in it. So I actually should be able to solve this for y. Um, I'm noticing that both terms are divisible by 12. Actually, maybe I'll just go ahead and say negative 12. So I can get rid of the negative sign as well. All right, make your life easier. If you notice that um, there's a number that will divide into everything, do it. Make the number smaller. So this will now become y squared plus 2y is equal to zero. So this is much more manageable. Um, now, I, you can't divide by a variable because it, 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 it could be zero. So instead, uh, you factor out the GCF. So in this case, the greatest common factor is Y. So I will take out the Y and that will leave behind Y plus two. To solve this, I use the zero product property and set both factors equal to zero. Y equals zero itself is a solution. Um, subtracting two from both sides, I have Y equals negative two. Okay, now understand this, my friends. These are not final answers in any way, shape, or form. I need an X and a Y, um, but these are only Y values. So that tells me I, I, I have something comma zero, all right, there's my y value zero, and I will have something comma negative two. I need to find the x values that go with these y values. To do that, um, I need another equation to substitute into. So um, I have no choice but to go back to one of the original equations. It doesn't really matter which one. Uh, I think I'm going to erase all these X's I made just to make it more clear so I can see what I'm doing again. Um, I think I will choose the uh, second equation just because uh, of uh, things being positive like this. So let me do that. Um, I apologize, my computer's going really slow because there's a lot of ink on this page. So um, 
I'm going to recopy this equation, um, but I need to let y equal 0. All right, that's what I need to do right now. Okay, so, but keep your eyes on this equation right here. But I'm going to let y equal 0. So I'm going to have 2x squared plus 8 times 0 squared plus 24x plus 9 times 0 plus 40 equals 0. Well, these terms that have a 0 in them are going to go away, all right? Because they, they will just make 0. So that leaves me with 2x squared plus 24x plus 40 is equal to 0. Um, I'm noticing that all of these are divisible by 2. So let's go ahead and do that to make the numbers smaller. So let's divide everything by 2 right now. So that's going to leave me with x squared plus 12x plus 20 is equal to 0. Now this hopefully is factorable. Let's find out. So x times x. Um, 20, I'm thinking 2 times 10. If I make them both positive, that's going to work. If I set these equal to 0 to get my solutions, uh, I'm going to get x equals negative 2. And I'm going to get x equals negative 10. Now, both of these um, x values came from the same y value, y equals 0. But I only have y equals 0 written down one time. So I need to write it again. So I have space for both of my x values. So I already have something comma 0, but I need to write down something comma 0 again for these two values. So again, my two x values are negative 2 and negative 10. So that means I have negative 2 comma 0 and ne also negative 10 comma 0. So those are two solutions that I have so far. Um, but I'm not finished yet because I also need to find the x value uh, that goes with negative 2. So I need to go back and I need to let, uh, let x equal, uh, I'm sorry, let y equal negative 2. Okay, so I haven't used this color yet. So we're going to let y equal negative 2 now. So I'm keeping my eye on this equation, but instead of the 0, I'm going to put negative 2. So I have 2x squared plus 8 times negative 2 squared. All right, I'm right here. Plus 24 x plus, okay, here we go, 9 times negative 2 plus 40 is equal to 0. So I'm going to have 2x squared uh, plus 8 times 4, just squared the negative 2, plus 24x minus 18. Uh, plus 40 is equal to 0. So I will have 2x squared plus 32 plus 24x. Um, might as well combine these like terms right now. Okay, and now I have like terms of 32 and 22, so that's going to be uh, 54. So I will have 2x squared plus 24x plus 54 is equal to 0. So I'm noticing that all of these are divisible by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just to make the numbers smaller and easier to deal with. 
So now I will have x squared plus 12x plus 27 is equal to 0. I'm hoping this is going to be factorable. x squared is x times x. 27 is probably uh, 3 times 9. And if I add them up, I get 12x, so this is great. I'm going to use the zero product property where I get my solutions by setting these factors equal to zero. So that's going to give me x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 9. So again, I had one y value of negative 2 that gave me two separate x values. Okay, however, I only have negative 2 written down once. So I need to go ahead and write it down again. Alright, I have something comma negative 2, but I have another something comma negative 2. Okay, now what were those numbers again? Uh, the numbers were negative 3 and negative 9. So negative 3 comma 2 and negative 9 comma 2. So these are the four solutions to the system. All right, we're going to do the exact same thing on number 24 that we did on number 23. Uh, we'll use the elimination method. So we're looking for opposites that cancel. See how these are the same and these are the same? That means if I were to multiply by uh, negative 1, then they will become opposites. So this equation will become positive 8x squared minus y squared plus 39x minus 2y plus 81 is equal to 0. So this is my new equation, so I'm going to really forget about my old equation for a while. So let me cancel that out. Okay, time to combine like terms. So if I combine these, I'm going to have uh, 7x squared. These are going to cancel out. And I'm going to have uh, 28x these are going to cancel out alright plus 28 equals 0 I'm noticing that all three of these are divisible by 7 so let's go ahead and do that just to make the numbers smaller and easier to deal with divide by 7 everywhere So that's going to leave me with uh, x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now hopefully this is factorable. x squared is x times x. 4 could be 2 times 2. If I just leave these both positive, it adds up to a middle of 4x. So these are the same, so I don't have to do this twice, but I'm going to set x plus 2 equal to 0. Subtracting 2 from both sides, I get x equals negative 2. Okay, so this is going to start off my collection of solutions. But this is just the x value, so this tells me that I have negative 2 comma something. Um, this is the x value but I still need the y value that goes with it. So where am I going to get this uh, y value from? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this negative 2 into one of the original equations. So I'm going to let um, x 
equal negative 2. And I'm going to plug it in and see what I get. Um, I think I'm just going to use the, uh, the top equation. The numbers are a little smaller, so I'm going to use that. So, uh, so keep an eye on the top equation. Let me just erase these x's so you, nothing is hidden. Keep an eye on the top equation. So I'm just going to rewrite it. All right, focus your eyeballs right here. Um, but everywhere you see an x, I'm going to put a negative 2 in parentheses. So this will be negative, then I've got negative 2 squared plus y squared uh, minus 11 times negative 2, all right, because there's x again, plus 2y minus 53 is equal to 0. Uh, be careful with this. I'm going to square the negative 2, um, but the negative sign is not going to go anywhere. So um, if I do negative 2 squared, this becomes a positive 4. Uh, but the squaring does not include this negative sign out here. So it's still going to be negative 4 right now. So I've got negative 4 plus y squared plus 22. All right, plus 2y minus 53 is equal to 0. OK. Um, all of these constants are like terms, negative 4, positive 22, and negative 53. So I'm going to have to combine all three of those together. But first, let's go ahead and write down the y term. So I've got y squared, and I've got plus 2y, and now let's add those three numbers together. So that's going to be minus 35. Come on. Don't crash on me minus 35. Um, that's the sum of those three numbers equals 0. So hopefully this is going to be factorable. So y squared will be y times y. 35 is uh, 5 times 7. I'm shooting for a middle to be positive 2y. So if I do a, a negative 5 and a positive 7, I'll get the positive 2y. Okay, so I need to use my zero product property and get my solutions by setting these equal to zero. So y minus 5 equals zero and y plus 7 equals zero. So this is going to be y equals 5 and y equals negative 7. So look, I got these two y values from this one x value. So what am I going to do about that? Um, well, since I have two y values, I'm going to have to write this x value twice. So um, I'm going to write uh, another negative 2 comma something. So now I have space for both of my y values. So uh, my y values are 5 and negative 7. So that's negative 2 comma 5 and negative 2 comma negative 7. So these are the intersection points between these two conic sections. Number 25 is going to be even easier because I already have opposites that cancel. Uh, the y squared is opposite and uh, the 2y, I have a positive and a negative. I don't even, I don't even have to multiply by negative 1. So if I begin combining like terms, I will get um, 2x squared, and then these cancel. And then I have negative 12x, and then these cancel. And then I have plus 10 is equal to 0. I'm noticing that all of these are divisible by 2. So I should go ahead and divide everything by 2 to make the numbers smaller. So I'm going to get x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. Um, this is probably going to factor. So x squared is x times x. 5 is 1 times 5. 
if I make these both negative, that'll make negative 6x. So um, I can find my solutions by setting these factors equal to zero. It's called the zero product property. Adding one to both sides, I get x equals one. And adding five to both sides, I have x equals five. So I have these two x values. So understand this. What I have right now is one comma something and five comma something. These are both x values, but I still need the y values to go with them. So the way I'm going to get these y values is I'm going to use one of these original equations and I'm going to substitute these x values into the equation one at a time and find out what the y values are that go with them. So let's start off by letting x equal 1. Keep an eye on the top equation because uh, I'm going to substitute 1 for all of the x's in the top equation. So that's going to give me 1 squared plus y squared minus 6 times 1 plus 2y plus 6 equals 0. So that's going to be 1 plus y squared minus 6 plus 2y plus 6 is equal to 0. So um, that's going to give me y squared plus 2y. Now the, uh, the negative 6 and the positive 6 are going to cancel each other out. Uh, I still have this 1 though, so I'm going to have plus 1 is equal to 0. This is going to be factorable. y squared is y times y. 1 is 1 times 1. And uh, they add up to 2. So this works out fine. I just need to let them both be positive. These are the same, so I only need to do it once. But if I set, set y plus 1 equal to 0, subtracting 1 from both sides gives me y equals negative 1. OK, so I had an x value of 1. And that gave me a y value of negative 1. So 1 comma negative 1 is a solution. Let's do the same thing again. But this time I'm going to let x equal 5. OK, uh, keep your eye on this equation right here. Because I'm just doing the same thing, but instead of a 1, I'm going to put a 5. So that's going to be 5 squared plus y squared minus 6 times 5. There's that 1 again. OK, plus 2y plus 6 is equal to 0. So this will become 25 plus y squared minus 30 plus 2y plus 6 equals 0. So I've, I'm going to have y squared plus 2y. Now I need to add these three numbers together. 25 minus 30 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1. So that's going to be plus 1. OK, this is like deja vu all over again. Because I, I had y squared plus 2y plus 1 equals 0 a minute ago. And we saw what happened. OK, so we let x equal 5, and we got negative 1 again. All right, that's no problem. Oh, I overshot. 
So that's going to give us 5 comma negative 1. So that's it. These are the solutions to the system of conic sections. This last problem is a little different. I was hoping we would get an opportunity to do um, substitution, and this would be a good chance. Um, I'm always looking for something that's the same in both equations. And here I notice that we have y minus 3 squared, and that appears in the other equation as well. So that gives me the opportunity to do substitution. So um, Whenever I do substitution, I really, really like to write the equations uh, side by side before I even begin. So I'm going to do that now. So the first equation um, is uh, I've got the y minus 3 squared is equal to negative 5 times the quantity x plus 1. Okay, so that's one equation. The second equation is x plus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared uh, is equal to 36. So, um, because uh, y minus 3 squared equals all of this. I should be able to take this expression and substitute it into the other equation for uh, y minus 3 squared. Okay, so I'm going to take this expression and substitute it right here in place of all of this yellow stuff. Okay, because y minus 3 squared equals this so I should be able to replace y minus 3 squared with this. So that's going to give me x plus 1 squared plus. Now here comes the swap of this with this. So I'm going to have uh, minus 5 times x plus 1 is equal to 36. Now there's no need to have plus minus, so I'm just going to put minus. Instead, boom. Now I have only x's, so this should be doable. x plus 1 squared, I need to do x plus 1 times x plus 1. Um, I might as well go ahead and distribute this negative 5, though. So this will be negative 5x minus 5 is equal to 36. If I double distribute or FOIL this out, I'm going to get the following trinomial, x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 5x minus 5 is equal to 36. Like terms like terms, I'm going to have x squared. Uh, let's see, 2x minus 5x, so that's negative 3x. And then 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And that equals 36. So um, I need to subtract 36 from both sides. So that's going to give me x squared minus 3x uh, minus 40 is equal to 0. So now I really would love to factor this. If my computer would not crash, maybe I'll just start writing. No! Alright, I think it's okay. It's getting a little bit unstable, so need to wrap this up as soon as I can. x squared is going to be x times x. 40 is uh, 5 times 8. I, I'm shooting for a negative 3. So if I have a positive 5 and a negative 8, that would be good. Using the zero product property, I can find solutions by setting these factors equal to 0. Subtracting 5 from both sides gives me x equals negative 5. Adding 8 to both sides gives me x equals 8. 
So these are the solutions that I got. Um, well, they're the x values anyway. So I need to get ready to record my solutions. So I have these x values. So I'm going to write like this. Um, what are those x values again? Negative 5 and 8. So I have negative 5 comma something and 8 comma something. I have the x values, but I need the y values. So the way I will find the y values is by uh, substituting these x values into the other equation. So um, I'm going to start with the negative 5. So let x equal negative 5 first. So this will become y minus 3 squared is equal to negative 5 times. Um, so x is negative 5. So that will be negative 5 plus 1. So this will be y minus 3 squared is equal to negative 5 times negative 4. All right, I added those. So this will be y minus 3 squared is equal to positive 20. Hmm, this is not going to be even, so I hope it's okay. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So this is going to be um, <clears throat> y minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 20. Um, this can be simplified, so I'd have y minus 3 is equal to plus or minus. This is 4 times 5, so this is 2 root 5. Um, and now I'm going to add 3 to both sides, like plus 3, plus 3. So that gives me y equals 3 plus or minus 2 root 5. So I'm going to abandon this uh, in favor of decimals at this point. So, um, well, first of all, the plus or minus. This really means two separate things. Uh, we've got 3 plus 2 radical 5 um, or 3 minus 2 radical 5. It's really two different uh, values. So 3 plus 2 radical 5 as a decimal is approximately 7.47. Okay, now 3 minus 2 radical 5 is approximately negative 1.47. So these are the two y values that we get from a single x value of negative 5. That means I really need to write the negative 5 twice. So, so far I only have it written once. Uh, but I have two y values, so I really need to write it twice. So I've got um, negative 5 comma something. Now, those values again, I have negative 5 comma negative 1.47 and um, positive 7.47. Okay, so I have these two solutions so far. But we still have another x value, a value of 8, to play with. So let's see what we get if we let x equal 8. Okay, so we'll let x equal 8. All right, I'm going to go back to here. Okay, so the last time we let x equal negative 5. Okay, and that's this negative 5 right there. So I'm going to do everything the same, 
but instead of negative 5, I'm going to put an 8 right there. So I'm going to have y minus 3 squared is equal to negative 5 times 8 uh, plus 1. Okay, so that'll be y minus 3 squared is equal to negative 5 times 9. So y minus 3 squared is equal to negative 45. Hogwash! I can stop this nonsense right now. You can't square something and get a negative number. Or thinking of it another way, on my next step, I want to take the square root of both sides. You can't take the square root of a negative number. That's going to be imaginary. So no solutions from this. Okay, but we still have the solutions that we already had. Um, but remember when we wrote down 8 comma something? Turns out, nah. Um, so these two solutions are the only actual solutions to the system. Okay, because I'm getting decimals, I really want to take a look at, at desmos.com and see what this looks like. I know that the first equation is a parabola uh, because only the y part is squared. The second equation is a circle. So um, let's check the intersection points of this parabola and this circle on desmos.com and see if it matches this. Okay, so I typed these in. And so you see there's my parabola, there's my circle. They are, they are indeed intersecting at two points. And uh, one of them is negative 5 comma 7.47. And the other one is negative 5 comma negative 1.47. Nailed it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.